My name is Sheldon Pearson, and this video is about the second TMEA 2021 Texas Allstate excerpt for viola. This excerpt is taken from the first movement of Mahler's second symphony, the Resurrection Symphony. There's a lot of detail in this excerpt, and this excerpt is an opportunity for us to show our sophisticated musicianship and play all of the detail that we see on the page. At the beginning of the movement, Mahler writes with quite serious and solemn expression. So we need to keep this in mind, that this is serious music, and that needs to come through when we play this. Before the excerpt begins, figure 16 begins slowly, and after that, Mahler writes, starting very slowly and gradually becoming more agitated. So it's important for us to pay attention to the fact that when our excerpt begins, it's kind of like we're hopping onto a moving train that's headed for figure 18, which is really fast and loud. It's always worth listening to recordings when you're learning excerpts. We want to begin with the end in mind, so we want to listen to the whole piece. That way, we know where to point our compass before we start practicing, and this will not only speed up our work, but it'll get us farther. So, bar one, it's piano with accents, but the violas are also the leading voice, so we need a good amount of body in the sound. The way I play these accents is we use both speed to get the accent head, and then the tail of the accent we do with vibrato. So like this, we use both speed, and then we vibrate both speed, and we vibrate like that, like that. Bar three and four, Mahler writes dots as part of a crescendo, so we want this to be off the string. But in the third bar and the fourth bar, which is the bar before 17, he writes two different rhythms, all off the string. So this is triplets, and then bar before 17, not triplets. So we want to be able to really subdivide and keep the rhythm tight. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's different than the triplets before it. Now, figure 17, uh, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, I don't speak German, but Mahler writes nicht teilen, which means don't divide with your stand partner, or in other words, play all of the notes on the page. Now, Mahler was one of the uh, great conductors of his of his generation, maybe the greatest, and he's certainly uh, one of the great symphonic and orchestral composers in our history. Uh, but he didn't play the viola. And so actually, when you look at figure 17, you'll see that what he's asking us to do, play all of these chords, it's actually impossible. So what we need to do is, rather than throw our hands up in the air and say, well, he didn't know what he was talking about, ask ourselves, what is it that Mahler wanted? Well, this, when you listen to this passage in the recording, the violas are playing, I think, with the brass, and this is very broad and dramatic and a bold uh, musical statement. So what I do to try to give Mahler as much of what he asks for, listen to the video at the beginning, uh, the performance at the beginning of the video. I drop the bottom notes in figure 17, bar one and bar three, so I play only the top two, but in bars two and bar four, I play all the notes. Uh, I think it's possible to do that. Um, now, it's important uh, at figure 17 that we really pay attention to the note lengths. Now, I'm just going to play single notes because I'm talking while I'm playing here on the recording. But figure 17, we have quarter note, rest, rest, long quarter, and then eighth with a rest, 16th, and then an 8th. And then we have another quarter, 1, 2, 3, quarter, 8th, 16th, but this is a half note with an accent. So we really want to bring out all of that musical detail. Um, if you play all of the notes the same length, that's not what Mahler wrote. So we want to really show that we can play different note lengths and bring out that the second bar has an eighth note to end the phrase, and the fourth bar has a half note to end the phrase with an accent. Now, 
Bar five of figure 17, we're again back to this off the string, tight rhythm. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I play all of these off the string. So that's off, off, off. And now you'll notice in the subsequent two bars to follow, the dots above the notes end. The times that I play this in an orchestra and from the recording that I listen to to prepare this, the orchestra basically plays all of these, all of this figure as if it's dotted, which makes sense because Mahler writes the rest between each of the figures. So I actually play all three of these bars the same articulation. So off. And now, um, we want to build a crescendo up to forte. A natural here. And now, upper half on the string from the elbow. A flat here. We want to really pay attention that the bar before has an A natural and that's an A flat on the scale going up. Again with a crescendo, we want to show all of this musical detail. Now, skipping ahead a little bit to bar before 18, we have a whole bunch of bows in bar 18, and that's designed to facilitate the dynamics. So we have a fortissimo, subito piano, and a crescendo back to fortissimo, all under a molto ritardando. So, the way we want to do this is we want to play a really fast down bow to give us the forte, or the fortissimo, and then we start piano at the tip, and we do a crescendo over the up bow into the down bow. So it looks like this. And then accent, and, four, and, all three accents. And now at figure 18, uh, this didn't come through really well, but um, note that uh, figure 18 has a comma, second after figure 18 has a comma, and fourth after figure 18 has a comma. So I put little breaths to indicate that there's a space between the bar before 18 and figure 18, between the second and third of 18, and between the fourth and fifth of 18. A little comma, a little breath. And now figure 18, molto più mosso. So we've done a big molto uh, ritardando before 18. And four, and comma. And then fortissimo with a diminuendo, but fast, molto più mosso. One, two, three, four, one. And then accent diminuendo. And this we want to do in the upper half on the string. If we do it from the wrist, it sounds a little bit, a little bit um, casual and kind of scrappy. But if we play it on the string with, from the elbow, it should sound kind of like quicksilver. So we have a fast diminuendo, and then a comma, and another diminuendo from fortissimo. Three, four, one. Accent. Comma. And now this passage we play on the string, upper half. Crescendo. To an accent. Diminuendo. And now this is a crescendo. Accent. Poco rid. Accent. Accent. Fortissimo accent. And now Mahler writes a tempo subito, but heavier. So, fortissimo, tremolo, accent, diminuendo, and now this, actually it looks like an F natural, but it should be an F flat. That's really important, that's a wrong note. Accent, 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 crescendo to fortissimo, accent. And then, uh, three more accents getting a little softer, and then the last note you'll notice in the performance at the beginning, I play like this, because what Mahler writes from this bar, the, the Nicht Island bar, he writes mit dem Bogen geschlagen. So geschlagen is a struck stroke, and it's a really cool effect when you get a whole string section going like that. It sounds kind of ugly.
otherworldly, it is the Resurrection Symphony after all. So I actually played the first note like that, just to show that that's what Mahler wrote. Now, what I didn't talk about is the second last line is a very difficult passage to play because of the chromatic motion. Um, if you need a fingering, I suggest that you go back to the performance at the beginning of this video and slow it down to half speed or quarter speed, and you have my permission to use my fingering if you want. Um, but really, the issue here is not getting a good fingering, it's getting the music in your ear. If you're struggling to hear these pitches because of the way the chromatic harmony is kind of slipping and sliding around, I recommend do what singers do. Play it at the piano, or get someone to help you play at the piano, and sing along. So you don't have to let anybody in your house um, watch you or listen to you sing, but I recommend just go through and see, well, we've got a G sharp and an E, and then D and F sharp, and then a B major chord. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing it like this. Uh, it's really important that if you want to play a passage like this in tune, you need to be able to hear it, and ideally you need to be able to sing it before you can play it. Uh, and then it's just a matter of putting your fingers in the right place. But you really do need to hear it first. So, good luck with your 2021 TMEA Texas Allstate excerpts. If you have a question, uh, please feel free to drop it in the comments and I'll try to answer.